Hello everyone, it is Joey here, and I'm just doing no bones about it. I've got it right up there on the screen. Three dollars, guys, if you have a chance, and if you have not donated, please, by all means, feel free to go to my website and donate three dollars. That would be excellent, a one-time only gift. That would be magnificent. Now, let's get started on gram-positive bacilli and filaments, okay? All right, so, um, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. I'm, I apologize. It seemed like my screen was off a little bit. I had to adjust that. So anyhow, gram-positive bacilli. Okay, the way that we're going to differentiate those um, is we're going to see if they're spore formers or not. If they are spore formers, that's what we're going to go for right now, okay? Then you're going to differentiate further by if they are aerobic or not. And so let's go ahead for the aerobics, and then we're going to differentiate by if they're modal or not. So if you notice, then what we're doing here is we're going SAM, S-A-M, and then SAM over here, S-A-M. You can imagine SAM eats rice or, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know, lights rods uh, for bacilli or I don't know, whatever works for you, okay? But um, spore formers, we're going aerobic, and then we're going motile right now, okay? So be serious and be anthracis. B. serious is motile. B. anthracis is not motile. Okay? And don't worry, we're going to go over some high-yield stuff here in a minute, too. Now, if they're non-aerobic, then we're going to still see if they're motile or not. If they are motile, it's going to be one of these clostridiums. And if it's not motile, then it's going to be perfrenogens. Now, if you notice, clostridium sounds like closet. So think about these hang around in the closet. They're closet hangers, if you will, okay? <laughs> okay. Just kidding. But anyhow, so they hang around in the closet, all right? So they are non-aerobic. They don't like to be out in the air. They don't like to be out in public. They are in the closet. They don't want to come out of the closet, okay? They want to stay in there. So that's your closet stridium, your clostridium. Now, the bacillus, therefore, you know that they don't mind being out in the air, out in the public, okay? So now let's, get, let's look at our non-spore formers. Our non-spore formers, okay? We're differentiating between C. diphtheria, which is coronary bacteria, or we're talking about listeria. Okay, so let's talk about what's modal. The listeria is modal. The coronary bacteria are not modal. Okay, and so what we've got here is we've looked at the ones that are modal right there, and then we're looking at the ones that are non modal. We have, as you see here, we have three that are going to be non modal for all purposes that we're going to talk about, okay? So now, let's talk about that a little bit. If you notice here, this is a table. It's what this is supposed to represent in the upper left-hand corner here. So we have a bowl of corn there for Karani bacteria. We have a scroll there to help you remember, because some people like to remember the scroll, some like the bowl of corn when I've done this before. But because diphtheria literally kind of means like a parchment or, or a scroll, okay? When you look at the back of people's throats, you're going to see a pseudomembranous kind of gray parchment, okay? Or gray uh, scroll-like appearance is what I guess they are trying to get at when they were naming this. But uh, so you can have a bowl of corn for corny bacteria, corny bacteria. Or you can have a scroll there. It's supposed to be a scroll for diphtheria. To remember, it's a gray scroll, scroll pseudomembranous uh, appearance, okay? Now, this is supposed to be a perforator right here, okay? And so, um, these are, it's like a stapler or something like that. It perforates paper, nonetheless. I like to go with these three items right here because it keeps with the paper kind of idea. And so, this will perforate, perforate the scroll or the letter, okay? So, that's going to be C. perfrenogens. It is non-modal. Coronary bacteria is non-modal. And then you're going to have anthracis. It's uh, represented right there, as you can see, by... Um, by the envelope, the letter, okay? Because if you remember, that's a bioterroristic threat and it can be mailed, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about these. Be serious, okay? It's like, what? You're eating fried rice? Be serious. What? Be serious? Got you sick that quick? Be serious, okay? Because be serious will give you food poisoning in less than six hours the same way that Staph aureus will. Actually, you will get emesis within six hours, and if it goes over eight hours, then you're going to get diarrhea. If you remember, that's going to be your cyclic AMP, that's your heat labile diarrhea. If it's under six hours, it's heat stable, you're going to get your nausea and vomiting, okay? It's associated with reheated fried rice, okay, or Chinese food, and it is going to be the treatment is symptomatic and just try to prevent it, okay? Its mechanism of action is G 
S, if you remember it was one of your C's in the college campus uh, mnemonic that I gave you before. So now let's go over to anthracis. There's anthracis right there. That black seal right there is the black SR, okay? Because a lot of times they will get a black SR, okay? So you will get that kind of lesion. Sheep herders get this, or wool sorters, okay? And uh, B and thracis, if you remember, the A and the C were capitalized, okay? And that's because of the adenylene cyclase. For all purposes sake, it's going to turn into the cyclic AMP also. All right, so black SR, adenylene cyclase. You're going to get edema with this. Then you're also, um, it's going to affect you cutaneously or it can affect your, your lungs as well. So we'll go with cutaneous first. These are cutaneous symptoms we've talked about thus far with the edema, with the uh, black eschar. But if it does go into your lungs, then you're going to have mediastinum. You're going to have mediastinum enlargement, okay? Mediastinus, stinitis, all right? And you can remember that mailing B and thracis because it can't move, right? It's non-motile, so you have to move it for it. So you have to send it in an envelope, send it in a package, right? It has to latch on to sheep, and it has to walk around with the sheep by sitting on its wool, right? So it has to go through different media, okay? And that'll help you remember mediastinal enlargement, okay? It also has a glutamic, a deglutamic, all right, coat or saccharide. And you can remember glue because you had glue the envelope down with the seal, the black SR seal, okay? And I think I might have gotten that from Howard Shin, the micro mnemonics. Anyhow, so that's going to get you for, for this, and the main thing is going to be a fluoroquinolone or Cipro, Floxacin in particular, is going to be the treatment for this one. And what I think about is, hey, I'm trying to check, and I'm trying to see whether or not people are trying to mail me some anthrax, so I'm going to put the light on it. I'm going to put the fluorescent light on it, okay, because Cipro is a type of fluoroquinolone, right? So I'm going to put the fluorescent light on it, and remember those work by topoisomerase 2 uh, DNA gyrase inhibitors, okay? So put the fluorescent light on that one. Okay, so now let's go over here. We've got our closet stridium. Those are staying in the closet. We're going to come back to those because I'm going to need another page for those, okay? So, because I think my writing is getting kind of junky. I apologize. So, Karani bacterium. Let's go ahead to the, to that one, okay? So, for Karani bacterium, like we said, it is non-modal, right? And since it is non-modal, uh, it's going to be over here on the table. It's going to work by, and let me just say C. dip. Notice I'm not saying C. diff, but C. dip, okay? So, this one's going to work by inhibiting elongation factor 2. It's going to look like Chinese letters under microscopy. Okay, so elongation factor 2, it does not let your protein elongate, so it stops protein synthesis, in other words, okay? You're going to have the gray pseudomembranous uh, scrolls that I was telling you about, okay? And it's going to cause, it can cause airway obstruction and nerve palsy. Okay, it's going to start impeding on those nerves up there. And the main thing I'm going to tell you right now, okay, is the Telluride Loffler auger. Okay? Telluride Loffler auger. That is, that is very specific to that, okay? So Telluride Loffler auger. And how do you prevent against this? Well, you know, if you guys remember, you have the Tdap, right? Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, right? Diphtheria, that's this one right here. So you're going to have the Tdap for it, all right? And so... That is pretty much it for chronic bacteria. So let's go to these closet stridiums and let's get to the Listeria monocytogenes, okay? So let's start off with Listeria. Listeria can cause meningitis. You're going to have it mostly in the young or in the old, okay? And so this is going to be, it can be transplacental or transvaginal. So I'm going to just put trans here, okay? Um, also, you can get it through ingesting contaminated foods. This can grow in very cold degrees, like 4 degrees Celsius. So you get it in like some of your lunch meats or blue cheese or anything like that in the refrigerator that's been sitting around, you know, in the Frigidaire, as we always called it. All right, this one's going to have actin rockets in it. Shiga, which is Shigella, and Listeria are both going to move and be modeled by actin rockets. I like to think of Joseph Lister, you know, where we get Listerine from, of his face just sitting there like on a sperm body or something, just kind of floating around and swimming around, okay? And it's like propulsing itself with actin rockets or something. Get something very vivid, you know, maybe it's passing gas. I'm like, I don't know. But just get something vivid in your mind, okay? It's actin rockets going around, okay? And so um, it is intracellular, faculatively, if you remember. It is the L and the LY at the end of faculatively. 
and it is the only gram positive to have an endotoxin I told you before, which is listo, Listeria Lysin O. And you're going to treat it actually with just an amped up penicillin. Okay, so amino penicillin will do just fine for this. An amped up penicillin. Penicillin. Okay, now let's go to the closet stridiums. Okay, now the the first one I'm going to talk about is C diff. I told you before about clindamycin. If you're using that too much, it can cause C diff. Really, any type of um, antibiotic can eventually cause it if you have overuse of it. But C. diff is going to be your other pseudomembranous, uh, pseudomembranous appearance, okay? So you have coronary bacterium with a gray appearance in the throat. This one's going to have a green-yellow appearance, all right? And it's going to be in the colon, pseudomembranous colon. It comes in the fecal-oral route, of course, and it can cause diarrhea, and its drug of choice is going to be Metro. Remember me telling you the Metro will go down, okay? Clinda stays up, and if you get too much Clinda, then you have to give Metro to counteract. All right, C. tetani. Let's talk about this. C. tetani is going to work by decreasing glycine and increasing your GABA release, increasing your, um, excuse me, decreasing your glycine and GABA release, and therefore that's going to increase your glutamate indirectly is what I meant to say. I apologize, okay? So it's going to increase your glutamate and it decreases GABA is really the main thing you need to remember is that part right there. And it causes muscle rigidity and spasms. It's a tetanospasmin is the neurotoxin, and it's drug of choice. You're going to give an antitoxin globulin, all right? And um, things that are going to be associated with it is the resorious muscle giving that kind of uh, smile that, you know, you, you can look that up. And then also masseter tightness. You're going to get this transmission through trauma or puncturing or um, even through belly button and proper cutting of the belly button for kids, okay? So now let's go to botulinum. Okay, botulism. Of course, we know it's used for cosmetic stuff sometimes. It can cause floppy baby syndrome. All right, so floppy baby. And uh, let's see. This is going to work with the mechanism of action by decreasing the release of acetylcholine from the axon terminal. <clears throat> you can get this from honey. That's why you don't give babies younger than one year old honey. It can come from spore ingestion from uh, either the soil or also from canned foods because um, you want to remember that your closet stridiums, okay, these are going to be, if you remember when we was going through it a while ago, <clears throat> which ones are spore formers? All your bacilli, bacilli and your closet stridiums, okay. And um, let's see, is there anything else? Um, you can get this through skin wounds as well, and they have an antitoxin as well, so three-valent antitoxin of A, B, and E. Probably not that high yield, though, okay? So now C, perfrenogens, all right. Now this one, when you are growing it, is going to have hemolysis. <coughs> excuse me. It's going to have a double-ringed hemolysis. This is the one that can cause gas, gan, green, okay? This is going to be food poisoning, but it's greater than 16 hours food poisoning. Um, it has a lecithinase virulence factor. Also, um, let's see, anything else? You can treat it with just normal penicillin or clindamycin. You have to do wound debridement because of the gas can green, and it's alpha toxin causes myonecrosis. Alpha toxin causes myonecrosis. All right, so very quickly, let's run through these last ones, these filamentous ones. You look under the microscope, and they'll give you a picture a lot of times. It's like, oh, look at there. You know, that must be some type of hyphae, some type of, you know, I don't know, fungi or something, but it's not, okay? They're trying to treat you. This is Norcardia and Actinomyces. They are gram-positive, okay? The thing to remember about these um, is that you're going to do the Acephas, see which one is aerobic. The Norcardia is aerobic. It's Norcardio Asteroides, so you can remember someone on steroids doing aerobics. They're driving a car fast because it is acid fast positive, okay? And so uh, remember the other names for acid fast. Go back to the first video if you don't remember those. And um, you're going to have decreased immu immunity, all right, because you can think about people who are on steroids doing this and getting it. They have decreased immunity because it is Norcardia uh, asteroides, all right. The drug of treatment is TMP SMX. Over here, actinomyces, that one is going to be acid fast negative, non-aerobic, you find it in your mouth. The main things you're going to hear about this one is someone had dental surgery, also IUDs in women, and this one's going to appear as sulfuric 
granules microscopically. It usually has neutrophils surrounding it. You're going to treat it with PNG, the way I like to think about that. Oh, and you're going to do an incision and drainage on it. And I think about this, since it is sulfuric, you're not going to treat it with sulfur. Treat it with PNG first. This one you can treat with the sulfa, and that will complete our gram-positive bacilli. Thank you.